Tears from a man who witnessed the horrors of the Saffron Revolution firsthand. Until now, Upancha, a Sikh businessman, was the unknown face of Burma's uprising. But here he is during those protests. Don't be afraid, come follow us, he shouts to the crowd. Upancha was on the front lines when the protests, which briefly inspired hope for change, were brutally crushed. He was at the sacred Swedagon Pagoda when the first monks were forcibly derobed and killed. One of the monks in the front was beaten on his head and kicked in the chest. Blood poured from his mouth and he died in front of my eyes. Upancha, now in hiding, is deeply skeptical about the UN mission in Burma. Gambari is a very important person. He should demand to meet the people and the monks arrested during the protests. But for most of the past six days, Mr. Gambari has been closeted away in Burma's bizarre jungle capital, Naypyidaw. Only today, at the end of his visit, did he meet pro-democracy leader Aung San Suu Kyi. But he left the country without meeting the junta leader, senior general Tan Shui, seen here waving off his prime minister on an overseas visit. Instead of meeting the senior generals, Mr. Gambari has met with junior members of the regime, who proceeded to lecture the special envoy. It appears to have been less of a dialogue than a monologue. For Upancha, there was a moment of hope for dialogue. He revealed to Channel 4 News that not all military commanders were prepared to follow orders to fire on monks and unarmed civilians. He held secret talks with a senior army officer who refused to carry out the orders of Burma's military strongman. The commander of the 77th Regiment said to me, we will not shoot. We understand the situation, so please hold the demonstrations in a peaceful manner. So they sent another commander, Thura Shui Man, to Rangoon, and he ordered his soldiers to shoot the protesters. Regiment 66 shot the people, and many were killed. We felt great pity about the death of these monks. We shall never forget this. Burma's senior military leaders didn't forget either. Yesterday, state media reported that the 77th Regiment commander was being demoted. A clear warning not to step out of line. And while he was permitted to meet some elderly, specially selected monks, Mr. Gambari did not get to meet young monks like 24-year-old Ashin Kawida or hear their testimony of fear and persecution. He took to the streets, hoping the regime might heed the plight of its people. Then, as a wanted man, he went on the run, as monasteries like this one in Rangoon were ransacked. The security forces did not hold back. At this monastery, pools of blood mark where monks were ruthlessly beaten. Kawida confirmed that the brutality continued in detention. The junta officials sat on chairs, and then three monks at a time were told to squat on the floor. They were asked if they took part in the movement. If they said no, they were beaten on their backs with sticks and ordered to name the leaders of our movement. Those who refused were beaten again. Monks are still being jailed, he says, and some are being killed. You wouldn't know it from watching Burma's state television. Here, benevolent, smiling generals lavish gifts on monks, hoping to repair their tarnished image. Activists like Bo Chi, a former political prisoner, hope Mr. Gambari will not be taken in. This lady, the beauty abbot, his monastery was raided by the security forces in the midnight. Then lady, he got serious injuries. He died at the Medina Hospital. Bochi's organization has documented that over a thousand people are still being held in detention following the crackdown, far more than the government admits to. 
and torture, he says, is widespread. Three activists already died. When should he die during the interrogation? Because he was tortured to death. And Bo Chi has further revelations, which underline the urgency of Mr. Gambari's task. He's corroborated evidence about the killing of school children, which challenges the government claims that it was putting down a violent uprising. The incident in question took place on the 27th of September at Tamway State High School in Rangoon, not far from where these images were filmed on the same day. A 15-year-old boy was killed by soldiers at Tamway. Yeah, his lady forehead was hit lady by bullet. One bullet. Yeah, one bullet. Then lady, one lady, one of his head is lady uh, is up. open, blown up. Also, lady, many people can see lady his brain on, on the ground. So there is lady. Everybody was lady shock, and then they sh they they have to show to the regime, military regime in Burma. There is lady evidence. So other time, lady military regime cannot deny it. So the UN should consider. Yet the deny it, they do. This was the government's response to Mr. Gambari's call for dialogue through its mouthpiece. Rather than address outrage over UN claims that more than 100 people involved in the protests have now died and concerns about mass detentions, state television launched into a diatribe. Quoting the country's information minister, it began like this. But we'll never accept any interference that may harm our sovereignty. And then like a thinly veiled to threat to Mr. Gambari. You should not force or pressure us by harming the rule of UN to shape us as aspire by a big power. If so, your role of negotiator will be spoiled. In Junta's speak, Mr. Mr. Gambari was being I told that getting the senior generals to sit down to talks with Aung San Suu Kyi remains a big challenge for the UN, even though she's made it clear she is ready to talk. Aung San Suu Kyi herself has publicly said she will not rule out power sharing. She will not rule out all options until there is an actual dialogue. All options are still on the table. A UN statement issued tonight following Mr. Gambari's meeting with Suu Kyi claimed the way is open for substantive dialogue, but gave few details except to say that the envoy will return to pursue his mission. But for some Burma watchers, it appears the generals are just stringing the envoy along. This is a very clear, a very strong signal from the top military leaders that this is the Internet Affair of Burma. We're going to have our homegrown democracy, our homegrown roadmap in our country. You are out. As Mr. Gambari left Burma, state television continued to show the familiar fare of staged managed rallies in support of the regime. This is what awaits the UN Special Human Rights Envoy Paolo Pinheiro when he arrives next week for his first visit in four years. Will it just be more of the same, or is there perhaps a flicker of hope for change? Inigo Gilmore, Channel 4 News, Bangkok.